Hello guys, this is your boy Lisa Lanky and today we'll be talking about LinkedIn. How to grow on LinkedIn, how to make new connections the right way and most importantly, how to use LinkedIn to find your next job, internship or even a freelance project for that matter. So watch this video till the end because I'll be going all in on LinkedIn in this video. By the way, this is the second video in the social media series. So if you haven't watched the first one on Instagram, do give it a watch after this video. You can also check the timestamps to know what we'll be talking about and jump over to a particular section if you want to. If you have no clue on what LinkedIn is, then it's basically the social media for professionals wherein you can see what everyone is working on and you can even connect with them. So then who should be using LinkedIn in the first place? I think everyone should have a profile on LinkedIn right from the start itself as it will not only help you build a better career for the future, but also help you in choosing the right one by looking at other professionals in the field and learning from them. But for that to happen, you need to have a LinkedIn profile in the first place. And for that, let's go over to my laptop screen. So here we are on my LinkedIn profile uh, page. And as you can see right off the bat, um, my profile picture, my face is completely visible. That's something that you should take care of. Make sure that you're not including anything from below your uh, neckline. So it should only be your face, nothing else. So here, if you can see, uh, there are some profiles popping up in my suggestions. Um, people also viewed. But here, as you can see, most of them are including their um, body entire body in the profile picture itself don't do that in linkedin try to add only your face that's it um after that in the headline part this is the headline so in the headline part i usually divide it into three uh, parts the first part is reserved for where you're working at so founder at guest in me that's where i'm working for uh, then the second part is for what your passions are or your side hustles. So YouTuber, that's my passion and developer. I work as a freelance developer. So that's my side hustle. And the third part is for your formal education. So BTech in computer science, KJSE, that's the degree that I'm currently pursuing. So I've added it in the third part. So make sure you divide your profile, uh, your profile headline in these three parts uh, as well. Other than that, we have uh, our contact info so here as you can see there are a couple of uh, websites that i've listed so my linkedin profile my uh, github portfolio so my entire portfolio website um after that github uh, profile and then there's youtube there's uh, my address there's email there's twitter uh, all of those things have been added over here so yeah you can add those things as well just press on this uh, edit button and you'll be able to add added directly uh, after that we have the more part and here is the important thing that i wanted to uh, talk about so when you save your entire profile on pdf make sure it looks good because that's what recruiters do they will come up on your profile they will save it to pdf to uh, to look at it later they won't be looking at your entire profile, scrolling down, seeing your experiences, seeing your uh, education and stuff. They won't do that. They'll just save it to PDF and then they'll view it later. So make sure when you save it to PDF, uh, do this practice, uh, save it to PDF and just check your profile if it's looking good or not. And I'll give you pointers on how to make it look good. So uh, the first pointer that I wanted to talk about, and that's the next section itself, uh, that's the about section. Don't add a lot of things in the about section. That's because, okay, I just closed the PDF. Let me download it again. Um, I'll show it why um, I'm saying don't add a lot of things in the about section. That's because it gets added to summary. You don't want the recruiter to be seeing your summary uh, as a five, six line uh, big about section. You don't want that. You want the recruiter to see your experiences. You want them to see uh, your education, your skills. These are the skills that um, that will actually uh, land you your job, not the about section. So make sure that your about section is as 
small as possible mine is just a gen z starter to be honest uh, which is just three words so yeah you can uh, keep it whatever you want just keep it short and brief uh, something that just summarizes your entire profile uh, after that we have the experiences part so here in experiences i've added a lot of things um first is of course uh, guest in me uh, which is the nightlife app that i had created um, you can see i've also added the link for it so if you click on this link you'll be directly taken over to the application itself uh, apart from that we have the show world app that i had created um, and then there's akim that's the uh, internship then there's uh, kjsc code cell i've written a small one or two line uh, description about my job there as well so worked on organizing its events throughout the year and i've also talked about what it basically is so it's the competitive programming club of kjsc the college that i'm studying in so which is backed by uh, code chef after that we have the red carpet which is i've worked on their flutter application with over 3 million downloads i don't have to talk much about it because it's pretty popular um after that influencer maven and then there's uh, code nicely and then there's uh, another club in my um college itself that's sahas so yeah you you add only uh, two to three lines about each of them don't add, don't go in detail uh, about them here itself um, just make sure that you're adding at least two lines one line to describe what it is about and the second line describing what you did uh, at that organization so this is the perfect example uh, the first line is for uh, what the organization is about and the second line is for what you did in that organization so after that we have the education part i don't think i need to explain much about that but um, it's my education school college and um, yeah the university and stuff so after that we have the skills so in the skills part many people what they do is they add in as many skills as possible uh, don't do that because if a person comes up on your profile they'll be seeing your skills and they'll get confused as to which is your top skill and what are you really good at so in the top skills only keep uh, these three i i think they only allow three skills uh, to be kept as top skills so uh, keep these top three skills different from one another so flutter is very different from monstack monstack is basically mongodb express react and node.js combined together so that just shows that i know all of these four things uh, in just one line that is monstack after that we have public speaking which is very different from both of these uh, other two top skills so keep these top 3 skills very different from one another uh, after that we have uh, all of these industry knowledge skills then there's tools and then there's interpersonal skills languages and all of these other things so yeah you can add in as many skills as you want just make sure that in the top uh, 3 skills you're adding skills which are very different from one another after that we have uh, accomplishments that is languages of course uh, these are the languages that i know organizations and then the uh, projects that i've worked on so yeah you can actually click on here and see each of these uh, projects and um, see how it looks and stuff so usually you add your github link uh, in this c project part but yeah it's it's on you maybe if you have uh, an entire website made out of it so you can just add that website uh, down there uh, so that's it on how to make the best profile on linkedin the next major part that i want to talk about is connections and how to actually do networking on linkedin so this is the most important part to be honest and um, the way i look at it is you need to first connect with three kinds of people the first kind of people are the ones that you daily interact with say for example uh, that that'll be a person from your own college maybe your own um, company maybe someone who's whom you constantly interact with so those are the first kind of people that you want to connect with and um, how do you connect with them so just search for them okay so say for example i want to connect with people who are there in kjsc so i'll just search for kjsc 
and I'll press enter and then I'll see everyone who has written KJC in their headline. So event had head at uh, this particular uh, club at KJC. There's general secretary at KJC. So all of the people who are there who are currently studying in KJC, who is currently studying in my college, I can connect with them right away. So do that first. Uh, connect with the people who are studying in your own college, maybe in your own school, maybe uh, they are there in your own company. Connect with them because they are the first ones um, that you really want to connect with. The second kind of people are the ones that you look up to. So say for example, you really love the company Zeroda or maybe you really love some particular startup. Connect with their co-founders. If it's a small startup, uh, their co-founders won't be having a lot of connections. You can directly connect with them or else you can follow them. So if they have a lot of uh, connections, they might not accept your connection. So just follow them and see what they're posting, uh, interact with their posts. Uh, the third kind of people that I wanted to talk about are the people that you connect with so that you get an opportunity to work with them. So this would be again, uh, startup founders, maybe HR team of the uh, company that you're trying to get into. Maybe also talk with the people uh, whom you can have as mentors. So if you really look up to someone, if you really uh, think that maybe this person has similar mindset like me, uh, or he has a very good uh, understanding about this topic, this particular topic, you connect with them. Say for example, I want to learn about blockchain. So I'll search for blockchain or maybe uh, I know that Matic is a really good uh, cryptocurrency. So I'll try to search for Matic and see who are in its development team and I'll try to talk with them uh, or some you can actually go ahead and search for anything and you'll find people working on that product. So say for example, I really like the product um, zero the okay, I, I'm, I don't know why I'm repeating zero the again and again, but um, if you search for zero the as well, and then you search for its developers team, you can actually connect with the people who are working on the product on the product itself and talk to them. So they don't have a lot of connections. The founders and the co-founders might have a lot of connections, but the developer team, they don't have a lot of connections. So you can actually talk to the people who have made that product. Uh, so that's the actual power of uh, LinkedIn. The major thing that people do uh, is go over to their my network part and see these connections that are being recommended to them and then just blindly connect with every single one of them. Don't do that. Please don't do that because what will happen is you don't know those uh, those people first of all. So you won't be talking to them. Uh, if you won't be talking to them, there's no uh, actual point of connecting with them. It's just going to be increasing your uh, connections count and it won't even matter. So all of these uh, followers, all of these connections, they might increase. But after a certain point of time, it doesn't matter. You really need to connect with people whom you talk to, whom uh, you can actually look up to. So those are the kind of people that you connect with, uh, not the people that are being recommended to you. So yeah, go ahead and start your LinkedIn journey and uh, all the best for it.